Now, first up, Larry Elder. It is great to see you, Larry. It's been a while. Thank you for coming on the show. You too, Larry. And I want My you to, pleasure. I want you to tell us, uh, you know, you're, as I understand it from some of the polls, not that I really believe in polls, but the recall effort is very close, 50-50. And in terms of who would replace Gavin Newsom, uh, you are a strong favorite. So congratulations to you. What's the big issue, Larry Elder, right now? Well, there are several big issues. Uh, the, the biggest one is, is the rise of, of uh, homelessness, the rise in crime, the outrageous cost of living, and the way this man has slammed down this state in the most uh, draconian way compared to the other 49 states, while ignoring the own, his own science. He had his own kids enjoying in-person uh, private education while shutting down schools, and the, the kids already are behind in California, near the bottom. 75% of black boys in California, Larry, cannot read at state levels of proficiency, and those levels are are not high. Nearly half of all third graders cannot, and they were all deprived of a whole year of in-school education. While the teachers union is the largest uh, and most uh, most powerful union in the state, the largest funder of his campaign, uh, and they did not want in-school education. While they were enjoying uh, still getting their real salaries by teaching virtually, we also have the fact that for the very first time in California. We're having a net migration of people out of the state. Mm. And we're talking about people between fifty and hundred thousand dollars. And the number one reason that they cite is they cannot get that first house because of the stranglehold the environmentalists have had on Washington on uh, Sacramento for the last twenty or thirty years, and they've had on this governor for the last two years. Anti growth, anti growth, anti growth, anti oil and gas, anti water. That's what's going on in this state. You add it all together, and two point two million people signed a petition. Nearly a quarter of them are Democrats and independents who just voted for this man two years earlier. And um, Gavin Newsom has a love affair with taxes, right? 13.3% is the top income tax in California. Uh, look, I'm a New Yorker, but even that is 13.3 is a pretty <laughs> big number. It's, it's the highest marginal tax, <laughs> income tax state uh, in, the, in the country, 13.3 percent. You're absolutely right. But it really isn't driving the multimillionaires out of here. They're still staying here. They can still afford that. The people that are getting hurt are the people in the middle class. Those are the ones that the anti-growth people have done a war on. And I'm going to turn that around. And then, as I said earlier, you got the problem of homelessness, for crying out loud. They think that you can just build your way out of it without dealing with the underlying reason why people are on the homes, why people are on the streets in the first place. That's also going to change. And as I said earlier, you're talking about a large number of people who are Democrats, independents, and they are fed up. And they're really fed up with the public schools. Uh, two thirds of black parents say they don't want to send their kids back to the Los Angeles district because they've been able to watch virtual education and they see how bad it is. And we're talking about maybe 300,000 public school teachers in California. And it is estimated that maybe 5% of them are incompetent. That's around 15,000 teachers. Any given year, about 2.2 of the 300,000 are fired. Imagine if we did the same thing with the police. There are 10,000 Police officers in LA, where I am, assume 5% of them were, were bad cops, planning evidence, engaging in racial profiling, or using excessive force. We wouldn't put up with it, but we're putting up with 15,000 bad teachers. That's going to change. The polls show that black and brown urban parents want choice in education, yet every year they pull that lever for the Democratic Party, and I think I can break that stranglehold. Yeah, no, that is great stuff. Uh, so, as I understand it, uh, Larry Elder, uh, Gavin Newsom is at it again. He's mandated, not just advised, but mandated right. masks in school uh, for the kids, for the teachers, for the administrators. Now, talk about science. Right. Um, first of all, not even the CDC has suggested that. I thought the kids are not the ones we should be worried about. It's the frontline healthcare workers, I get that, but it's mostly older guys, guys like me. Maybe it's guys like you. Why mask the kids? It does right. a lot of damage, I am told by people who know about these things. Masking kids in the schools does a lot of damage to them psychologically, socially. It's difficult to right. communicate what they're thinking and feeling, and it's an impediment to learning. Absolutely, and that's why I'm asking people to go to electelder.com. Let's do something about this. Not only that, Larry, Gavin Newsom is now mandating if you're a state worker and you've not been vaccinated, you're going to be vaccinated, you're going to be um, uh, checked once a week, tested once a week, and you're going to be forced to wear your mask at work. Now, think about that. The whole reason you and I have gotten vaccinated is because we're in that high level. Uh, I've got comorbidities. I don't know about you, uh, but the idea is that it protects you against people who've not been vaccinated. So, if you've not been vaccinated and you've assumed the risk, 
uh, that you might contract the coronavirus. You're going to be wearing a mask to protect yourself against other people who've also assumed the same risk. It doesn't make any sense. It's anti-science, and that's one of the reasons why so many people were upset with the way this guy shut down this state. A third of all small businesses, Larry, gone forever mm. because of the way he shut down this state. So my next question on that really is, with the teachers union breathing down Gavin Newsom's neck, what are the odds he's going to wind up, you know, another bad month of Delta strains from those who are not vaccinated and so forth? What are the odds he might close the schools again? What are the odds he might shut down businesses again? I think there's a good chance that you might do that. Uh, you know, the teachers union, as I said, is the largest funder of Gavin Newsom. Uh, they wanted the schools shut down. They didn't want to go back to work. And by the way, the largest affiliate is the Los Angeles Unified Teachers Union. And one of the conditions that they put forth uh, in order to go back to school, Larry, was to uh, defund the police and have uh, single payer health care. Now, what that has to do with K through 12 education is beyond me. And that's why people are mad. And that's why I believe he's going to be re going to be recalled come September the 14th. I mean, it just sort of looks to me a distant observer, okay, I don't know everything there is to know about California, but it looks to me like, you know, a bunch of crazy people running the state legislature in Sacramento. And one of the reasons, I mean, besides the fact that I've known you for many years and have always admired your approach and your principles, you could be a kind of drain the swamp governor of California, just a whole new reform process. Uh, you know, um, a bit of Trumpian, uh, Trumpian uh, philosophy comes to Sacramento. It's long overdue. Well, that's what I'm going to do. And unlike Arnold Schwarzenegger, I'm not coming up there to be liked. One of the reasons people tell me that he failed, Larry, is because he's used to being, uh, used to having adulation out of Hollywood. Mm. He's a Terminator. He's used to people loving him. And when the teachers union began to criticize him and the, and the nurses union began to criticize him, he caved and he went to the left. I'm not going up there to make friends. I'm going up there to kick butt and take names. I'm used to people calling me an Uncle Tom and a sellout. I don't know what it would be like to be adored like that. I'm going up there to make some changes. And it's not a Democrat thing. It's not a Republican thing. Crime doesn't have a color. Homelessness doesn't have a color. The rising cost of living doesn't have a color. Common sense Californians are hopping mad, and I'm going to be a voice for them. Yeah, and you know full well, if the establishment in Sacramento and elsewhere welcomed and embraced you, you'd be doing something wrong. So it's very important that you not be loved. <laughs> I mean, I think that's a critical element. Larry Elder, you got a shot at a revolution out there. And it's a pleasure to have you on the show again. And I wish you all the best on the campaign trail, truly. My pleasure. Electelder.com, electelder.com. Throw a little something in the tip jar. There we go. <laughs> all right, folks, you heard it. Moving on here in Cudlow, the economy.